it is officially man booker season and that also means an extra video for you guys this week so lucky you <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back. So the other day, this year's Man Booker Prize longlist was announced and that makes me so happy. <laughs> I absolutely love the Man Booker Prize, as a lot of you probably already know. I've basically loved every Man Booker winning book I've ever read and my taste just generally seemed to align really well with the prize. So I was super excited to follow along with this year's list. So I thought I'd just have a chat with you today about this year's long list and kind of tell you about which books I'm most excited to read. I will say right from the start that I do absolutely love this year's long list. As soon as I saw it, I just thought it seemed so diverse in its content and really exciting and I'm so ready to get stuck into it. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through the whole long list in this video telling you about each book, and I'm gonna start with the ones that I'm most excited to read, the ones that I'm definitely gonna prioritize reading, and then I'll go on to the ones that I will read if I have time. <laughs> I definitely don't anticipate that I'll read the whole long list by the way. So the first book on the list that I am so excited for is The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner. So this is a novel following a woman who is at the start of two life sentences plus six years in a women's correctional facility and I believe it's just about her adapting to prison life. I hear that it has a really fun cast of characters and it's meant to be quite humorous as well. Really all I needed to know about this book to pick it up was that it was set in a women's prison. I've never read anything in that setting before and the prison system is really fascinating to me. I believe this is also meant to be a critique of the current system so I think that will be really interesting to read about. For some reason this one just massively appeals to me so I hope it's going to be the one that I read first. The next one that I'm really excited for is In Our Mad and Furious City by Guy Gunaratney. I believe this one is about three young men who grew up in London and they're all absorbed by the typical things that they would be, so girls and music and football, that kind of thing. But then one day a British soldier is killed in their city and the city becomes extremely unstable. And I also believe that at this time one of the young men is caught up in a wave of radicalism that is spreading through his mosque. This novel clearly sounds very timely and important and I think it was Ali Smith that said this is a novel that demands change right now, so that just sounds brilliant. This one just sounds so rich and thought-provoking and interesting and I can't wait. The next one that I'm going to talk about is Warlight by Michael Andarche. So I absolutely love Michael Andarche, I recently read The English Patient by him, which was my first novel by him, and I thought it was great. It had some of the most beautiful writing in it that I have ever read, so I'm super excited to get into this one. I also recently saw Michael Andarche talk at the Man Booker 50 Festival in London, and now I just think he's a great man. <laughs> So like The English Patient, I believe this is another post-World War II novel, but this one is set in London and it focuses in on two teenage siblings. So this one is meant to explore themes of memory and family secrets and lies, and that just sounds right up my street. I'm so fascinated by families in novels, and the idea that we all have different versions of the past, so this sounds right up my street, and combine that with Michael Andarche's beautiful writing, and I think we might be onto a winner. <laughs> The next one that I'm going to talk about is From a Low and Quiet Sea by Donal Ryan. So Donal Ryan is an author that I've heard nothing but amazing things about and I've never read him before but he definitely sounds like an author that I would absolutely love so I was so excited to see him on this list. So I believe this novel follows the stories of three men who all are in very different situations. So one of them is a Syrian refugee and he has a wife and child. One of them lives in a small town in Ireland and he's having romantic and family troubles and another one seems to be on a very destructive and manipulative path. So I'm guessing that the three men end up coming together in some way and I'm guessing it's going to be beautifully written and emotional and relevant and impactful. I'm excited. The next one that I'm really excited about is The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. So this is a feminist dystopian novel which right off the bat has me super intrigued because I love a feminist dystopian novel if it's done well but I'm also quite apprehensive because there's definitely been a surge of feminist dystopian novels in the past year or so and not all of them have been as good as I have hoped. So this one is set in a world where girls aren't safe in their bodies and they have to be kept away from society to be kept safe but at the same time they're also taught things that they have to learn about love which I don't think are very nice. I don't really know much more about this one, the premise is pretty vague, I can't really find much more out about it but I kind of like it that way. 
I've heard that the writing in this one is quite inventive and hypnotic and otherworldly, which really intrigues me because I do like a book with a strong atmosphere. So I'm quite excited to see if I enjoy this one. So the next one is Sabrina by Nick Dronasso, and this is a graphic novel. So this is, of course, the first graphic novel that has ever made a man book a long list, and that in itself has caused controversy. And I don't know, I see both sides. Graphic novels are clearly a very serious literary art form, and they can undeniably be as intricate and intelligent as novels. But then equally, if you include graphic novels, in the eligibility then you can make arguments for short story collections and poetry collections and it's kind of a slippery slope i don't know a discussion for another day <laughs> i don't really know anything about this graphic novel other than it is about mainstream information and what kind of information is true and false and i think it's also about anxiety and just generally the modern world. This book was blurbed by Zadie Smith, who is an absolute hero of mine, and she said that it's one of the best books she's read in recent years, across any medium that's made her stop and reflect on the here and now. So that's incredibly high praise, and I can't not check it out after that. <laughs> So they're the ones that I am most excited about, but this next one also sounds really good and I think it's one that a lot of people are going to love and it's going to make me want to read it even more, <laughs> and that is Washington Black by Essie Edugayan. Edugayan? So I believe this one is about slavery and it's quite a big book, it's the longest on the list I think, and it's meant to be full of adventure and mystery and there's meant to be quite a lot of cliffhangers, so I think this one has quite a lot of potential. The next book is Normal People by Sally Rooney, and I was really happy to see this on the list because I've never read anything by Sally Rooney before, and I hoped that this would push me to try some of her stuff. Conversations with friends sounds good, and I thought I would enjoy it if I picked it up, but I just never got around to it. <laughs> so I believe this one is about two childhood friends from Ireland who grow up and over the years form a romantic connection. That is literally all I know, but like I say, I've heard brilliant things about Sally Rooney as an author, so I would be interested to try this one out. The next book is Everything Under by Daisy Johnson. So this novel is about a woman called Gretel, who when she was younger lived on a canal boat with her mother, and Gretel loves language and vocabulary, and when she's older I believe she works in updating dictionaries. But I actually think this novel is more about us finding out about Gretel's childhood on the boat, which is a bit strange, I think. <laughs> Apparently this is meant to be a brilliant debut, so I think I'm just going to wait and see what some other people think of it before I pick it up myself. <laughs> and the penultimate book is The Overstory by Richard Powers, and this is one that's been getting a lot of attention. When talking about the long list, people seem to be all over this one. <laughs> so I believe this novel is comprised of a few different stories that all end up entwining in a mutual effort to save an area of rainforest. So I believe the different stories focus on someone who works in the Air Force, an artist, an undergraduate, and a sight and speech impaired scientist. This does sound pretty fascinating to be honest, so I guess I'm just going to see how some other people find it. I just realised that I still have three more to talk about, so that wasn't the penultimate one at all. <laughs> the next one that I'm going to talk about is Milkman by Anna Burns. So this novel is set in an unnamed city where to be interesting is to be dangerous. So our protagonist is called Middle Sister and she's desperately trying to keep some things about herself hidden from the people around her. I don't know anything more about this one to be honest. It sounds kind of odd, but like it has the potential to be really good. So I don't know, I'll just have to wait and see on this one. The actual penultimate book that I'm going to talk about is The Long Take by Robin Robertson. So I believe this one is about a D-Day veteran who has PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and I think it's meant to be about him travelling to America, and it's meant to be a mix between prose and poetry. So this one does sound very interesting and unique, and like it has the potential to be pretty remarkable if it's done well, so I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for some reviews of this one. And the final book on the long list is Snap by Belinda Bauer, and this is a crime novel, and the reason I'm mentioning it last is not because I don't think crime novels are worthy of being on the long list, or whatever nonsense some people have said, it's purely just because I don't ever really read crime novels, so. 
So I believe this one is about three siblings whose mother abandons them when they're quite young and then they have to fend for themselves for a couple of years and then we see them as they begin to figure out what happened to their mother. Like I say, I don't really read crime myself, but I guess this is a really good one. So if I am in the mood for some crime, then this will definitely be the one that I pick up. So that is it. That is this year's Man Booker Long List. I hope you enjoyed me talking about them all briefly and you enjoyed hearing which ones I'm most excited about. I would absolutely love to know if you've already read anything on the list and how you found them or which ones you're most excited to read. I think this seems like a really great list. I have really high hopes for a lot of the books and I'm really hoping I won't be disappointed. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching everyone as always. Let's have a chat down below about man booker things and hopefully I'll see you next time with my next video. Bye everyone!